Minecraft is an international phenomenon, with hundreds of millions of players across every continent and country in the world, with a few exceptions. Today, Minecraft is banned in at least two major locations, North Korea where most technology is rare, and China, with the most heavily restricted gaming industry on Earth. But in the largest country in the world, losing access to 1.4 billion potential players is far from ideal. So, in 2017, after 8 years without the game, China's NetEase publisher teamed up with Mojang to create Minecraft China Edition, a free-to-play brand new version of the game. But despite a player base of over half a billion, Minecraft China is still a mystery to the rest of the world. Today, we'll be exploring the untold story of Minecraft China Edition. Before we even begin to look at Minecraft, we need to set the stage. The video game industry was crumbling beneath our feet, with a multi-billion dollar trade sinking to a worth of just a hundred million dollars, spread amongst the likes of Atari and its lesser known competitors like the ColecoVision, Intellivision, and Magnavox. As a result, progress on the third generation of video game consoles shifted to Japan, with names like Nintendo and Sega cementing their place in the industry during these years. Meanwhile, in mainland China, the economy had finally begun to recover under Deng Xiaoping's rule after a period of panic following the death of the leader of the CCP, Mao Zedong, in 1976. So, not ones to waste an opportunity for profit, Japanese technology companies began to tentatively venture into importing their new consoles into China. But despite the very high demand, imports were few and far between due to a 130% tariff on video games and hardware, along with extra taxes based on the cost of manufacturing. As such, a video game grey market began, with the few consoles and games that had made their way into China being reverse engineered by third parties to create bootleg products that were then sold and shared at much lower prices, a practice that continues into the modern day. But heading into the year 2000, there would be an increased importance placed on these cloned machines as the Chinese State Council implemented a universal ban on the production, sale, or import of gaming consoles and arcade machines, citing a growing concern of video game addiction, especially amongst the youth of China. Because of such a massive move in the industry, legitimate console gaming was left to die, even with the few exceptions to the rule such as the successful Chinese release of the PlayStation 2 and the not quite successful Nintendo IQ games, and unofficial video game clones would dominate the console market, while the PC and mobile gaming communities grew faster than ever, unaffected by the ban but still restricted by anti-addiction laws and other guidelines from the government. These trends would continue for over a decade, until January 2014, when the Chinese government slowly began easing restrictions on video game and console production. However, even still, the market was not fully unchained, with a requirement that every game must undergo a rigorous approval process by the Chinese government, who would scan any new releases for mentions or depictions of violence, sexual content, profanity, anti-government sentiments, and more, allowing or blocking it from consumption in the country as a result, along with implementing communication filters, anti-addiction rules, and several years later, even real-life identification. But regardless, the potential hundreds of millions of players and multi-billion dollar financial opportunities in China were far too alluring for the biggest names in gaming to resist, and slowly, one by one, the industry began to expand into China. Nintendo, Sony, and of course, Microsoft. The Xbox One, along with the PlayStation and Nintendo Switch, have since been released in China to incredible success, but the restrictions on the games themselves prevented Chinese players from enjoying a number of iconic titles in gaming history, including one we're all familiar with. Microsoft saw this as an issue. For the largest game in the world to be absent in the largest country in the world would be an incredible oversight. And thus, in May of 2016, Microsoft teamed up with a Chinese conglomerate by the name of NetEase to prepare a solution. It was time for Minecraft to make its long-awaited, highly anticipated Chinese debut. During an important day in 2017, leagues of developers, players, streamers, and even businessmen gathered in the National Aquatic Center in Beijing, China. 
Known as the water cube throughout most of the country, it was originally built for the aquatics competitions in the 2008 Summer Olympics, and was used once again earlier this year for the Winter Olympic curling matches. But in the large time span in between, the aquatics center stays busy. It doubles as an art exhibit, triples as a conference center, and even quadruples as a water park since August of 2010. On April 7th of 2017 though, it served yet another purpose, with representatives from Microsoft, NetEase, and and Mojang delivering a speech on stage in front of an audience of thousands, the water cube transformed into the familiar green and brown block we all know. Minecraft China had just been officially announced in one of the most important buildings in the country. And just three days later, the first private beta test was to be launched, with a few select players that had reserved a spot ahead of time getting the chance to play the world's favorite game before anyone else in the Chinese public. The testing closed abruptly just 18 days later, but on July 14th, Minecraft China officially reopened, and just under a month later, on August 8th, Minecraft China became available to the public completely free to play on PCs, and eventually phones and tablets everywhere. Now, naturally, Minecraft China had to be a success. I mean, the international version, even charging $7 for the mobile versions, $20 for console edition, and $27 for the proper Java release, has sold in the hundreds of millions. But you might not expect just how big of a hit Minecraft China has been. As of October 2021, there were 500 million players of Minecraft China. You heard right, 500 million, half a billion, more than a third of the entire Chinese population, and that number has only grown in the months since, at an estimated 550 million players today. Minecraft China alone holds three times the players of every other version of Minecraft across the entire world. That might come as a surprise, because when you search for anything about Minecraft China, gameplay, reviews, history, anything, the results aren't there. The reasoning behind that is pretty simple. China's nationwide firewall blocks Google, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and a lot more. So the Minecraft China community has moved elsewhere. Platforms like Youku, for example, which is such a trip it deserves its own video and probably will get it if the interest is there. Regardless of the nuance, Minecraft China is huge. One of the biggest games in the world, beaten only by PUBG, Crossfire, Dungeon Fighter Online, and G-Cart. The latter three also being huge names in Chinese or Korean gaming that you might not know about. But Minecraft China has something special to it. In the Western world, we have Java Edition, Console Edition, Handheld Editions, Windows 10 Edition, Pocket Edition, but they're nearly all the same. Just slight variations on the same game for different platforms. Minecraft China, on the other hand, is something new. Minecraft China is a different breed. When I started the research for this video, there was amazing potential for content. I mean, a game with half a billion players, with barely any coverage outside of their home country, with exclusive features that are rarely ever seen internationally and always make big news when they do? Omicron Gaming's Hypixel China videos were incredible and super interesting, not to mention Xiphon's video on its shutdown or even videos from people like Log.Zip just scratching the surface of the enigma that is China edition. There were new blocks, items, mobs, dimensions we had never seen before, and apparently two entirely new game modes called Chaos and Three Kingdoms according to the fandom page. But after weeks and weeks of straining to actually acquire the game, it is not easy to do so and I'll explain why and how in another video, Minecraft China was not what I had hoped for. Thousands of mod packs, brand new servers with tens of thousands of players to cover, hundreds of thousands of maps being shared around, and on top of all that, nine new game modes. Not two, like the Minecraft wiki said. That was what they had at the start of 2021. Now, in the middle of 2022, Minecraft China has nine exclusive game modes. Just as a small sample of the fever dream that is Minecraft China, how about a look at the brand new chaos portal made of obsidian and blue ice? Or how about the apocalypse dimension that it sends you to? We all know the famous Apocalypse Mode soundtrack, right? Have you ever seen the squirrels running around inside of it? What about the eagle soaring above them? Maybe you're more of a dungeon crawler kind of guy and you'd prefer scaling the towers of death scattered throughout the world. You know, duking it out with the three-eyed katana skeletons to make it to the top floor. And I'm sure we all know about Ghost Steve and the pincher jockey and our robot sidekick and those pesky mermaids always trying to drown you in an ocean filled with noxious purple fish. Look, I'm gonna be honest, even after all my research, I have no idea what's going on in this game. It's practically RL craft on steroids, except 
in vanilla Minecraft, but I know it's something new, it's something interesting, and considering that next to nobody outside of China has any knowledge on the game, it's something very important. It's gonna be a long road trying to document everything or anything really on Minecraft China, the cultural phenomenon we don't yet understand, this mystery of a game. I just hope you'll come on the journey with me. Thank you all for watching, I very much appreciate it, but don't leave just yet, I've got lots of important news. If you enjoyed this video, you'll be happy to hear that I hope this is just the beginning. I've got somewhere in the realm of 10, 15 other Minecraft China videos planned for the future because there's just that much to cover. Obviously things are subject to change, especially if people don't end up being very interested in this, but this might very well be the start of a new series. I'm thinking of calling it Exploring Minecraft China, and that's very much a working title, but it might end up sticking, who knows. Aside from that though, I also plan to start streaming a lot more often. I'm shooting for weekly videos with probably two or three streams between them hopefully, but those numbers could rise or fall with time and motivation, so no promises other than that, I'll do my best. I'm mostly going to be on Twitch, you can follow me at MCBYT Live, but there may very rarely be some special streams here on YouTube, and I'll probably announce them beforehand. Last thing, check out my Discord as always, there's cool people there and fun things to do, and yeah, whatever, join if you want. Point is, possible new series, follow MCBYT Live on Twitch since I'm streaming now, and join my Discord if you want. That's all I've got for you, so again, thank you for watching, take care of yourselves, and as always, have yourselves a good one. Peace.